reception or variance as well as a setback on the side yard. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. One of that is a maximum square footage. You can build it smaller but yeah. no bigger. Thank you. Okay, is there, I have not seen anybody come in for Roger Bud Company, so I'm going to leave that one on the end of the agenda. The next case we'll call is the City of Alloster case, application 2013-01 for the Wesley Foundation, 1601 North Patterson Street. Mr. Martin, you have the floor. Yes, sir, this is a request for variance relief. Um, to building setbacks. Um, if you look in your packet, I can put that on the screen. Um, go to the side plan. See on the west end of the property is an existing structure that faces North Patterson. This is a corner lot. It's actually a lot with three street frontages, North Patterson, East College Street, and also a rear alley. Um, actually, a rear alley with a question mark over it as to whether it is actually there. Um, they are proposing to add a two-story building on the east end of the lot um, to house up to 12 college students, um, as well as a new worship space, and a few other things, and also renovate the existing building. And this particular request is triggering three separate applications that we are going through. One is a conditional use review for the expansion of a church-related facility in R10 zoning. Um, that has already been through the Planning Commission and is scheduled for City Council next week. Um, but also triggered historic preservation review for the building of a new structure inside the historic district. Um, and that was acted on last night with the Historic Preservation Commission of the month. Or was that the coming up? Before. Oh, yes, that's right. That started before the planning commission. I was an advocate last night. Um, so that one's been approved. And then what remains is the marriage request for building setbacks. In the site plan, you see this sort of a snug fit in the back. Um, Staff has spent several months working with the applicants, going through different revisions to the site plan, trying to come up with the best possible scenario. Um, as I recall, there were a couple different ideas of situating this building so it complied with setbacks, but they yielded a very poor site design. Um, this property is hampered by the third street frontage um, and the rear yard setback from that, which is the alley, um, and also trying to maintain at least some distance off of the road. So if you look at that portion of the site, what they're proposing, instead of 10 feet off the north property line, they're proposing half that at five feet. The east property line is technically a rear setback, which required to be 30. They're proposing 15. Um, 20 foot alley that's there, according to the tax map, is actually part of their property, which if you follow that map, that means their building is 35 feet from the property line. Um, but the survey shows the alley to be there, so we're County Madison property line, particularly since it's an active alley. And then on the south, the building is proposed to be 13 feet from the right way line of East College Street, and so that would require 25, um, or it's the main building. All three of those are eligible for administrative review and approval because they're 50% or greater of the minimum requirement. However, the south side of the building has a porch that has um, archway walls on it we count as part of the building, even though it's not really the building. Um, and that is proposed to be as close as five and a half feet from the property line. Um, if they had a roof over it, it would definitely be a building with no doubts, but it is really an open patio that has archway walls. Um, so with variance being triggered for public hearing review because of the south property line setback issue, we decided to put all three on the agenda for variance consideration. So you get to review all of them. Um, staff is favorable of the administrative portion of the review if they wanted to stop just with that um, because of the issues involved with the site as a whole. As you look at that existing building on the west side, you see it is already very close to property lines, so they're wanting to match that somewhat, at least in terms of the north line. If you look across the street at Christ Episcopal Church, they are currently at 12 feet, maybe 13 from the street, so they're matching that in terms of the main building. To the rear is simply an alley that they are getting a little bit closer to. If the alley were to go away, they'd actually have a much bigger backyard. Probably no variance would be required. Um, historic preservation wise, there's a desire to have parking next to a building, not between the building and the street. So that sort of dictated the layout that they had put together, which is simply to put a parking lot between the two buildings. Um, it 
helps from a historic preservation point of view. It also helps from an access point of view. Currently, the parking lot that is there uses the alley for access, and this gets the access of the parking lot off of the alley and off to the main street, which we think is a good thing. Um, but doing that requires sliding the building to the east and kind of filling in most of that property. Um, so with all of that being said, staff is recommending approval of these variances based on this site plan. And the applicants are here if you'd like some further questions of them, otherwise I'd be glad to answer the question. Is this part of the college, the university? No. This is part of the Methodist Church. This is the Wesley Foundation Student Center. Um, it has existed in this current building for decades, and they are now expanding. Um, in the application, it mentions the, uh, a letter having to do with the parking agreement. Yes. Um, they are allowed uh, without variance purview, but just to go through a shared parking review. Um, in the site plan, you see, I think, 13 parking spaces. That accommodates the residents of the one building, but does not leave more than one extra space. Um, the concern was when they have functions there, will people park? The parking lot is there now, it's 14 spaces. This is approximately the same size. Of course, we're adding more usage. They have a, um, kind of an informal agreement with the property to the north for shared parking. There's 36 spaces there that are available to them. This is the BSU alumni house. They also have an agreement with Christ Episcopal Church to share their parking lot as well, um, which is in more spaces. So if they have a function or event, they've got available parking. And that was one of the concerns we had as far as the condition use would be. And then the process of formalizing those agreements in writing. And any, anything that we do would be conditional having some kind of a written agreement in the file for the parking. Well, for parking, that is something I've asked of them before the conditional use goes to city council next week, um, but it is not needed for variance consideration. No, I'm not saying it's not needed for our variance, but we, we probably ought to have it in the file that we can at least okay. acknowledge that and that they're going to get something worked out so that parking is not an issue in the future. Right. And we probably, they probably them. should have a parking, uh, cross parking easement file the record. And that's all they need to do. Well, for the shared parking, we accept letters that are signed by the property owners that make available the use of their parking, sometimes with terms and conditions, right. um, and that works. And particularly for a small facility such as this, um, with plenty of ample parking available, um, it's not a big issue. But just glad to know there's a place for people to park and come there for worship. Um, it's not a very large facility, so we would not be able to accommodate large crowds anyway compared to a church congregation of 2,000. Okay. Any questions, any discussions from the board at this time? Anybody from Wesley would like to give us any additional information, or are you satisfied with what's been given? My name is Andrew Crook, uh, 57 Northwood Park Drive at IPG Incorporated. I'm the project architect, I guess, on the project. I'm okay with the way everything's presented. I guess another key thing, just kind of tag along with the parking, probably 90% of their student base lives on campus that comes, so they're already parking in the parking decks and other areas on campus, so they walk across the front line to their, their largest events, which are usually 30 kids sometimes, because their larger events particularly when they're having a night, they have on campus at larger facilities that are able to rent out different spaces and that's where they have their biggest worship services on campus already. So the sizes of the events at this actual building will be relatively small. Okay. Any questions, any discussion? Yeah. What, what is in the, the, the main, the existing building that's there on the site now? There's, there's no residents in that building, are there? Currently, I think they have one apartment upstairs, which will be taken out and used for office space and storage now afterwards. But right now, I believe there's one upstairs that they can access from that. You can kind of see that side parking area and stairs on that northern side. Okay. Any other questions or discussions? Anyone else here support? 
I'm uh, Mike Cooper with ASA Engineering. We did the survey and layout. And just if there were any questions about um, setbacks or anything related to that. Any questions, any discussion? Questions. Thank you. You have support? I'm just here. Oh, okay. Spectator. Yeah. You okay. That in. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone here in opposition to this request? Anybody have any questions along this request? Was there any contact to your office concerning this, Mr. Martin? No, sir. No contact at all. Any other questions, discussions before I attempt to entertain a motion on this request? Okay. I think you got it all in front of you. Did we get a motion on this request? Uh, I make a motion that we uh, grant the variance as uh, presented by staff. I have a motion from Ms. Corwin to grant the request as presented. Citing. I don't have to cite. We don't have to cite. That's count for the city. Uh, All the criteria are applicable. Okay. Any <laughs> second? I have a second. Dr. Housel. All in favor, please raise your hand. You go on. No, no. Say. 401, please. Mr. Martin. Yes, sir. Not to 401. Got it. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Please make it look good. Yes, sir. Back to Roger Mudd. Were you able to contact anybody? I was. Uh, I reached Ms. Hancock, who's shown as that agent on this application, and told her that, you know, without showing up, that we're probably leaning towards postponing the request, and she is on her way. She had left a message from Ms. Carmella in an email. With Ms. Carmella not here today or yesterday, that's very possible. And I, I, that's the first I've heard of either one of those communications. Okay, when okay. she said she's on her way, what does that mean? She's down the street on Northside Drive, I believe, at their main office. Here. She came quickly. <laughs> okay. Mr. Davenport, you yes. have the, the lectern. Hey, Ms. Shea, thanks for coming. We were just starting to finish The request in this case from Mr. Lowe recently got some property off of Lakes Boulevard where he's on the highway commercial. Uh, the rezoning was successful and currently has plans for a billboard. Billboards allowed and off-site premise signs allowed on the subject property. His initial proposal is for the billboard to be higher than what's currently allowed at 42 feet rather than 35. He's also requested the design of the billboard that's presented on the screen and in your packet to be what's called the double stack, which is essentially two signs or four total signs, two per side, that faces a direction. You see these commonly around the town right now. Currently, the county, for these types of signs, does not allow double stack signs. So while he would be allowed to have one billboard, he's requesting the double stack orientation. So the variance of this request is for height and to design for those standards we have before you. Uh, staff looked at this request and ultimately, uh, after going through some of the criteria and trying to uh, accommodate Mr. Flood's concerns primarily for marketability of the signage, uh, ultimately recommended for uh, denial uh, with this, and that was a unanimous vote. There was a healthy amount of discussion on it, but at the end of the day, you have that, and I can try to go into those grounds if you need me, if you need me to, but we, we've got to prepare at least something for your consideration today on time with what Mr. Bud requested. So with that, I don't have any other comments other than um, Jana's uh, email and phone call that I just or was not aware of, so I'm just happy to hear the case now, but I'm open to Okay, any questions or discussions for staff at this time? Okay, you have the lecture. If there's any information you'd like to bring to us on this case, okay. Um, the sign that we were going to have um, was a sign that looked Um, it was 
side by side. So it would be, yeah, that's what we're wanting to do now. Um, but the, whenever we, like, we filed for a parents ahead of time, and we had wanted a sign that was like, you know, side by side like this, so you could put, you know, two here, then two on the back side of the um, billboard. But um, this one, and it was a little lower, I think, was what y'all are calling for in the variance that's now, that y'all require for. It was lower, so we were scared that, um, you know, people were going to draw on our billboards and stuff at the bottom, because I think it was a lot lower. So we, we raised it up a little bit more. So what we're doing now is we're raising it up more and we're putting it on top of each other. And um, so it's not to the ground, so someone can hit it with their truck. or Because the way y'all have it written, is it's a lot lower or some county got it written it's a lot lower and this one is see it's higher to the 12 inches <clears throat> i mean the 12 feet is a lot higher and i think the way it's written um and you know um requirements it's a lot lower and we're like that you know that's that's kind of dangerous and this one's a lot higher and it's up more um but um so basically, I don't know why they, um, what was the reason why y'all didn't apply for it? Well, which or I uh, didn't approve this one? Um, I think overall it was, this is a list, this is a, it was precedent. Um, historically, we've had this rule for about five years, and this really is the first variance of its kind that hasn't been more widespread. Um, there's no other double stacks in the area. About 1,200 feet to the nearest one toward the interstate, and then as far as siding code, the nearest one we could find is the purpose of the sign regulations as it redu relates to reducing clutter, because this would be a busier sign rather than a single face sign. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we would offer as far as reasons for for yeah. not. And then at this point, we're starting to get a little bit further away from the interstate. Uh, and it's a little bit further away from the commercial side. You're starting to get into the residential side when you go east from there. When, when I wrote down and looked at it, it's, it's pretty much all either a very light commercial. You've got a couple of banks, you've got a, a pharmacy, and the, the southern branch of the library down there, and, and that kind of stuff. But you get behind those, it's all residential. I understand your concern for it. I understand yeah, that concern for making certain that it's not too low, the overall sign, but what prohibits you from making the sign itself smaller so it falls within the parameters of the other five feet? Well, um, like, like, what do you mean by smaller? Like, okay, you want at least 12 feet off the ground mm -hmm. because you have, you're concerned about some hazards. Mm -hmm. But what about making the sign at the top? The sign is actually smaller. To conform within the 35 feet. Of well, um, we can do um, this paper that you have. I don't know. This paper here, we are, you know, we can make it look like that. But um, really? we were thinking that the main thing was, um, you know, that we couldn't go higher. But I mean, if we need to go square footage inside, we can. No, well, I mean, if it's a smaller sign, well, it won't be as high. I think, oh, okay. Well, um, advertising-wise, um, the um, shopping centers around it are, are mostly vacant, so we would want to get as much of the advertising as possible on that sign because um, we know the, um, you know, the uh, high flooring and all that. There's a lot of vacancies over there, and so the bigger the sign, the more you know advertising you can get on that. It's basically what we're doing. Because, you know, we clear all those trees over there. I don't know if you've been out there, but we cleared it to where, you know, it would look, the sign would be okay looking to have it that big. But, um, you know, he was going to spend a lot of money on this sign to make it look real nice, and he didn't want it to make it look short and stout. And then, you know, it just says it will look right, and he just wanted just a normal size billboard. There's one not far from it um, that's similar to that one, so that's a bit more. But it's not that far from it, and we're just a little off of the map, I think, by you know, 
only of <clears throat> the um, bill for him, but um, you know, he wanted to do changeable copies and make it, he doesn't want to make it short, he wants to make it all like every other billboard that's out there. So that's what we were going to make. We didn't want to make it short and set out. We wanted to make it all. You, you said previously that something about you would start off with the side-by-side -side sign? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that previously presented or something, or was that was that just your, your you changed it before? This is the second time. Well, I think we had to, um, I think we had to go by, um, you know, we thought about it, we drew up plans on it, and we decided that that would um, not look right. Okay. And um, it was, we didn't think about somebody taking a truck and, um, yeah, I've got to kind of look at that too, you know. Um, well, it is a commercial property, and there is a, a golf course that's next to it. Um, the houses are further down from it. Brandon, look, you know, we're still looking from the standpoint of code says 35 maximum feet, and by right, you could put 35 foot sign from two places, one west by right without asking anything. And right now you're asking us to allow you to go higher, right. which is also triggering a request for four faces, which is not allowed, you can only have two. So what we're trying to figure out, or what I'm trying to figure out is what he can live with, and he live with 35 feet and two faces. That's well, why, be, that's, why the faces? Well, it's in the code. It says you can have two faces. Well, can we change?